Hi, it's Chris. And Sue. It's a really hot and humid day today, so we're probably not gonna take the bikes out during the heat of the day, maybe later. So we had some thunderstorms go through last night. It made me think that maybe we could use our e-bike batteries for something other than just uh, running the e-bikes. People pay over a thousand dollars for a power station that they only occasionally use unless they go camping with it. So today's project, I'm gonna see if I can take our Rad City e-bike battery and use it as a power source for a power station. The Rad Power battery is 48 volts and 14 amp hours or 672 watt hours, so it's pretty substantial. Our Rad City bike takes about 750 watts at full power. So I wanted to find a power inverter that was right around there. I found this nice 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter that runs off of 48 volts. If you only have 12 volt appliances that run, you can use this DC to DC converter. It has a range from uh, input range of uh, 30 to 60 volts and can output um, 414 watts. The battery has this funky plug has three small pins that I wasn't sure what they were for. I checked with people on the Facebook uh, Rad City group and they said from their experience uh, when they took their batteries apart that they weren't connected to anything. So we just have to worry about the two main plus and minus terminals. I didn't see any connector in the US that fits the battery, but I did find these pins that fit in pretty well and I'm gonna design and 3D print a connector. Designing the plug for this battery is an iterative process for me. You can see it took me five tries until I got it the way I liked it. Here's the connector I designed to go into the Rad Power battery. This plate here is to make sure you get the polarity right and it slides in the back of the battery. And here are where the two pins for plus and minus will go. And this is that weird little connector that, so it slides in. And then in the back here, I've made uh, three screws or machine bolts that will hold a clamp to clamp the wires so they don't slip out. I'm using 12 gauge silicon wire where we've got a 48 volt source and about 20 amps. If we keep it enough wire length to just a couple of feet, this should be fine. To make up the connector, I'm gonna use these little pins that I found. Just gonna st strip the end of the connector here. And the end of the wire goes in there. And then I'm just going to solder this up. Here's the latest version of the connector I've made. It's got two holes that the, we're going to put the wires in. So we've got the plus wire. Push it in. Pin will come out on the other side here. Do the same with the black one. And so we've got the two pins all the way flush there and then I've made a cable strap to go over that screws down. I'm just using some M3 nylon machine bolts to put the wire clamp on with. Here's the connector assembled with the clamp on it and it just basically slides right in and I put this plate up here to keep it from pulling out and also to make sure you didn't reverse the polarity. To use the power inverter, you have to turn the battery on. So put the key and turn to the on position. And then just turn the switch on. And you can see that it's up to 53.8 volts. And the inverter is putting on 121 or 120 volts right now. Hooking up an oscilloscope, you can see that it's a nice pure sine wave. We only want to draw about 750 watts when we're driving the inverter. 
So for a test, I've got an oil heater that has on the minimum section takes about 750. So I'm going to give that a shot. So the fan on the inverter has gone on and you can see we're pulling uh, 724 watts or so. Seems to be working. I've got two red power e-bike batteries and they're different. The newer one has an HL-RP-S1304 number and this one works fine. And the other one I have just says uh, RP-1304. The newer battery that I ordered as a spare works fine. I've got it hooked up to an inverter. If I turn the key to the on position and I turn the switch on, the inverter comes up to power. It works fine. The battery that came with the bike that I got in early 2021, I've got it turned to the on position. But this one, when I hit the power, it goes on for a second and immediately turns off. If you look at the battery, there are some differences. You can see the one that works, the lock has got a different thing and the print for the fuses is much larger where the other one doesn't have that circle and the print is smaller. This is the original one, it doesn't work. This is the one that does work. I was curious if the red power battery and the 1000 watt inverter could run our large refrigerator during a power outage. You should also make sure the battery key is in the off position before you plug anything in. I've got the battery turned on. Now I'm going to turn on the inverter. And I'm going to switch my kilowatt meter over to watts so I can see what's going on. And then I'm going to plug in the refrigerator. Right now the refrigerator is only drawing 8 or 9 watts. So I'm going to open the doors, try to get the compressor to go on. I've opened the doors and the lights inside of the refrigerator on. Now it's drawing 94 watts. Now I've opened the freezer and the refrigerator. The refrigerator ran constantly at 140 watts, it would take four to five hours before the battery would be drained. I believe the battery is a 13S configuration. So when the cells are fully charged at 4.2 volts, the total voltage would be 54.6 volts. And if the cells are fully discharged at three volts, then the max, the combined voltage would be 39 volts. My trailer has a small microwave and I was curious if the red power battery and the 1000 watt inverter could run it. So I'm going to give it a test. I've got the battery turned on. It's connected to the inverter. And then I have the inverter going to a kilowatt meter so I can see how many watts are being drawn. The battery literature says that it has a 30 amp BMS. So 30 times 40 volts gives you about 1200 watts. So we'd want to stay under that. And this inverter is a 1000 watt inverter. Yeah, I think it can surge to uh, 2000 watts. For a test, I'm going to use my favorite camp mug with water and heat it for two minutes. Okay, we're currently got zero watts. And as I turn the microwave on, the microwave was too much draw for the inverter. In this example, I have the battery connected to the DC to DC converter to the 10 amp cigarette lighter socket. It's 12 volts. And I've got it connected to my trailer ice cool refrigerator slash cooler. It's a compressor based system. See that the compressor freezer is taking about 3.9 amps and it's at 13.8 volts. So that's about 53 watts. So running continuously, the 672 watt hour battery should run the 
freezer for about 12 hours. Red power battery manual says you should charge with the battery turned off, but it appears that it works also with the battery on. So I'm not sure why they have you doing that. I've got the red power brick plugged in and you can see that it's charging the battery at 2 amps. The other thing I was curious about is can we charge the battery at the same time it's being used. So for a test I'm going to plug in the power brick while the inverter is running the refrigerator. When I plugged in the power brick both lights on the charger went to red which says it should be charging. The charger that comes with the red power battery is 120 watts it said so we should be able to put 120 watts of solar panels on the charge. We've got our Genesun MPP charge controller. It's hooked up to solar panels. We're currently getting 56 watts. That's connected to the input of the battery. And then we've got our adapter here. That's going over to our power inverter, which is generating AC. The Jettison solar controller says it takes an input voltage from the solar panels from 0 to 60 volts. So you could probably put three panels in series, but uh, we want to make sure that we don't put more than two amps out at the uh, red power battery. That's what it expects. Here's the solar charging setup. I've got three 100 watt energy panels that are hooked up in series. And they're going to the Jettison, which is charging. And then I just put a meter in here so we can see what it's doing. So we've got the meter hooked up. We want to make sure that we stay under two amps. Right now it's sort of overcast, so we're not getting that much. And then I've got my extra battery on the adapter on the back of my bike rack. And I've got it plugged in here. My adapter's attached to the battery. I have it on the spare battery on my bike rack. And that's going down to the inverter down here. So it's running. I've got the inverter connected to my light test load. There's the inverter. You've got the bicycle with the extra battery on the back and the solar panels that are charging. Whew, it's hot out. I just finished doing my solar tests. I'm very excited on how well things turned out. Uh, it took me about a day to do the whole project. I'm a little disappointed that one of the batteries worked and one didn't. I need to dig into what's going on with that. But I'm glad that everything, the, both the DC to DC converter worked for 12 volt appliances and the 1000 watt inverter worked for um, some devices, not all. But now we need to get uh, Rad Power to make this as a uh, accessory for their bikes because I think it'd be pretty useful for people. So anyway, have a great day. If this was helpful, please hit like and subscribe. Take care.